Welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith With, an audio interview series presented by WFPK Independent Louisville, Consequence of Sound, and the Consequence Podcast Network. I'm Kyle Meredith, and today my guest is Jeff Amitz of the band Pearl Jam. He's got a brand new record out called Heaven and Hell. We're going to talk about uh, the inspiration behind some of the songs, working with Angel Olsen on one of the singles, and we'll also get a big old update about Pearl Jam. When's the next album coming? And are they considering any more anniversary surprises? It's Kyle Meredith with Jeff Amitz of Pearl Jam. Hi, Kyle. It's Jeff Amitz. Hey, Jeff. How are you? Doing pretty good. Well, I appreciate you calling me. Uh, Congrats on the new solo record. It's really been great to hear. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, heaven, hell. So I'd like to start with the name thing. You don't use your full name. Is is that a way to sort of separate from something or, or maybe even to build a character? I, I think it might be a little bit of sort of trying to create a character as opposed to just being like me, you know, like, and I think for me, I think I, from a graphic standpoint, I, I always liked the way that my last name looked as opposed to my first name. And so I, I like the A and the M next to each other and the T at the end. There's, so there's, I guess I've always thought in those sort of terms when it comes to band names and words and song titles and that sort of thing. So I always think of like how the letters look. And uh, I think that probably had as much to do with it as anything. It it certainly wasn't, you know, me trying to be Cher or to create this because it is it is my name. But I think I was just trying to take it out of like, I don't know, Eamon doesn't necessarily sound even like a name of a person. It sounds like it could be like a foreign word or something. So uh, now, as far as the songs, is there a certain period that these come from? Yeah, all all these songs were sort of written in a two month period. Um, last August, I recorded uh, "Safe in the Car," "The Noise," "The Door," and "Hyperphagia," and that sort of gave the it sort of gave me momentum to finish some other songs. And so over the course of like. September and probably the first part of October, I wrote the rest of the songs with those four first songs in mind, and uh, and it, it re- really different process than the previous two little solo things that I did because th- those ones were sort of like the best of 25 or 30 songs that I had recorded over a few years or whatever. So, with the first single, "Safe in the Car." Uh, when you were talking about the inspiration for the video, uh, and you mentioned Cormac McCarthy, I, I thought, oh my God, I hope we never get to that point. Was that also what you were thinking with the song? Yeah, well, I mean, the song it was initiated by uh, my my dogs. Uh, when we would have a bad lightning thunderstorm, uh, they would almost have an out-of-body fear going on. And the only place that I could get them to settle down was to go in the garage inside the car and I would usually end up sleeping with them in there. Um, And over the course of doing that a few times, I started thinking about like, well, where, like, obviously my dogs feel like it's the end of the world. (laughs) And, And so where would I go if, if, uh, you know, where would I go if it was the end of the world? And, um, one, one place I thought would be, it would be good to go to the bar with your friends because if the world was going to end, you'd rather be in a surrounded by people that you loved. And so that's the chorus sort of goes back and forth between being safe in the car and then uh, feeling love at the bar. And you tapped Angel Olsen to help you out on the vocals. We're big fans of hers. How did that relationship come about? I saw her play a show about three years ago in Montana, and uh, I ordered a T-shirt from her, and she responded after I ordered a T-shirt from her. I guess maybe she was actually running the merch part of her organization at that point and we stayed in a little bit of contact she came to a pearl jam show i think maybe two years ago and then uh we would just have a little little email connections kind of here and there um and then when i finished the song i kept i just kept hearing a woman's voice in it and uh i just thought well i'll start with kind of one of the great voices that i could think of and and then i'll work my way down and and she said she said yes and she was very gracious and and it really gave the song some desperation and gravitas, I think. Like, her, her vocals really, really kind of made the song. Now, is that her singing also on The Voices, or, or is that someone else? That, that's, my, uh, that's my niece, Akira, uh, my, brother's, my brother's daughter, who's also really, really great singer, 19-year-old singer-songwriter and trying to make things happen in music right now. But she, um, oh, She's got a great voice. Yeah, yeah. Now, while we're on the songs... 
Um, I want to hit on Somewhere, which is a really fun song. It feels like maybe going back to the uh, the punk of your youth, uh, which got me thinking, you know, like, aren't we always trying to reconnect with that kind of fire? Yeah, and that song came together really quickly and was and was kind of loosely inspired by Kink's well, Well-Respected Man, which I've, I think I've talked mm-hmm. about um, being a really important song for me. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, like a simple, angsty, you know, song about, you know, trying to not be what everybody wants you to be, carve out your own, you know, your own niche in the world. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, it, it, it's fun, especially to write those kind of songs on your own, because you sort of have to I think by nature, we want to kind of write mid tempo. So I just created a little drum loop and that was super up tempo and then wrote the song around that. Now, on the flip side, you have a song like Drugs, which is such a cool song, especially with uh, the spoken word style. Uh, it kind of even reminds me of, of like the weirder side of, of Pearl Jam. So so what's the story with this one? Well, I, I, I've always really appreciated um, the arrangements of a lot of the early Roxy Music records they, they, because they weren't verse, chorus, verse, chorus. It was almost like they were, uh, uh, they were acts of the song. Like there's the first act and the second act and the third act. And that's sort of... Uh, inspired that song and it and that song is sort of the sister or the brother to safe in the car because it's I guess the gist of the song is like maybe I would be able to handle the state of the world right now if I did more drugs <laughs> <laughs> now do you have any desire to tour the solo records um you know it, it I, I have a you know a big enough group of songs right now that I it would be fun to do that at some point for sure um I, I don't have any plan to do it um Pearl Jam's pretty busy the next three or four months, and, you know, I, I guess it would really depend on how much Pearl Jam's working, you know, over the next year or two, and I, there'll be a spot somewhere where I'll, I'll do that, because it's, it's, I've, I've never really done it, and it would be sort of good to just go out there and put a whole ton of pressure on myself. <laughs> and as I heard, as far as Pearl Jam, you know, Can't Deny comes out, and we're like, yay, new single! And, and expecting that that leads to a new album, but then it's like, well, maybe not yet. So is it a safe to assume that that's probably a 2019 thing? I, you know, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, the the one thing that we have working against this is the upcoming tour, and the other thing we have working against this is it takes three or four months to actually do a vinyl version of, of any record. So, um, um, I mean, that was the thing that held off even my little solo record the, the longest was just the production of, of, of vinyl um so yeah I, 2019 is probably safe to say but I, I i don't know i you know we 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 just need we just need a good solid six to eight weeks uh carved out where we're we're just in recording you know all these ideas that we have so does it surprise you the distance between albums as you get later in your career, which is a normal thing for career bands? Yeah, I, you know, I it's different for me. I, I I don't I don't have kids, and so everybody else has kids, and I think that really eats up a lot of space. And I think you know, if you look at I don't know, if you look at the last seven, eight, ten years, like I've been probably more active than the other guys in terms of like I've. I, know, I think I've made a couple of R&DM records and a Trace Mountains record and a couple solo records. And so I think I have a little bit more time to do that stuff. Um, but there's, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot, you know, we're working on a lot right now. So it um, feels like whatever's next is going to be really good and really, uh, you know, there's a lot to be inspired by and a lot to be pissed off about. So Well, I, I wouldn't want this to get in the way of a new album because I'm definitely hungry for that. But the box set series, like you guys did for the first three albums, do you all talk about doing that for No Code or Yield? Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we'll do boxes for that or not. Um, we ended up reissuing those records ma- mainly because we saw like what people were paying for them on eBay, and we just thought that was just insane that people were paying like a few hundred dollars for you know a version of No Code. So um, we we you know we sort of opted to remaster those records and and just put them out you know, in that form. I guess, you know, what I want to hear is, is what's left over. I mean, those, so those are my favorite Pearl Jam records. They're really important to me. And let's be honest, uh, I, I'm greedy for what uh, I haven't heard from them. Jack Irons years. The Jack Irons years, yes. Well, with all due respect to Matt Cameron, who also has a new solo record that I'm really digging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, 30th anniversary show, maybe? Yes? 
Uh, you know, I probably won't be the one leading the charge for that because I wasn't really that into doing the 20th anniversary, and I I don't know. I yeah. always feel like there's danger in looking back or, like, I, you know, I'm all, I am always want to make new music and play more new shows and go to new places and so, but... Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure somebody will throw a three X's or a three zero on a T-shirt or <laughs> something. <laughs> well, I look forward to it. Uh, and again, I know the most important thing is a new album. Uh, I can't wait for a new record and to hear what you guys are saying and singing and, and sounding like. I mean, Can't Deny has really been a great teaser. Uh, but again, in the meantime, thanks for Heaven Hell. Uh, really has been a lot of fun to listen to. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. All right. Take care, Jeff. Bye. All right. Yeah. See you, cop. Thanks again to Jeff Amen of Pearl Jam for giving me the call today. His new solo record is called Heaven Hell. Don't forget to subscribe to Consequence of Sound's YouTube channel to keep up with your favorite artists and interviews. And for the podcasters, head over to iTunes and Podchaser to give us a rating and review. WFPK.org, that's where you can head to to hear me every Monday through Thursday from noon to 3 Eastern. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. 